Okay, fifth graders, today is Monday, January 13th, and we are doing Module 3, Lesson 8. Okay, we're starting the second half of Module 3. You had your mid-Module 3 test last week, and we're still going to be talking about adding and subtracting fractions, but we're going to talk about using different strategies, no longer just that rectangular fraction model to make equivalent fractions. Okay? Today what we're going to use is we're going to use a different type of diagram. We're going to be using a number line. I know you're so excited to add and subtract fractions. The reason why it's important to have so many different pictures and different ways to do this math is because it really deepens your understanding. In real life, when people need to add and subtract fractions, do they sit down and draw a number line? No. Not really. They write numbers, right? Do they draw a rectangular fraction model? Not really. They write numbers. But if they're good at math, what they should be thinking in their head, they should be picturing a number line or picturing those rectangular fraction models in their head. Okay? So today we're going to talk about how we can use a number line to add and subtract fractions. How can I draw a tape diagram to represent this equation? Go ahead and write the equation 1 plus 1 and 3 fourths in your notebook, and then draw a tape diagram. Your tape diagram might look something like this. Here's 1. Here's one more. And here's something shorter called 3 fourths. Do you guys see here? We have 1 plus 1 and 3 fourths. Yes? Okay, now we can also use a number line to show this equation, and we can do that by drawing a number line. Remember, a number line is literally what it sounds like. It's a line that goes on forever and ever and ever, and there's numbers on it. And we know that as we move towards the right on a number line, the numbers get greater. greater. And as we move left, they move, they get smaller. So let's say I have zero here. Here's one, here's two, here's three. I can show that one plus 1 and 3 fourths is like this. It starts at 0. Here's 1, right? I move to here to get to 1. And then I have another 1 here. And then for 3 fourths, I have to split the distance between 2 and 3 into fourths. And here's 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. So using a number line, I can show 1 plus 1 and 3 fourths. What is the answer, by the way? Right, because I can see right here where, where my adding stops. The answer is 2 and 3 fourths. Very nice. Go ahead and copy this problem down. 2 and 3 tenths plus 3. How could I use the commutative property to help me here? You know, commutative property means I'm moving from one place to another, and I'm not changing the value. I'm not changing the problem. So is this the same thing as 2 plus 3 tenths? Plus 3? Yeah. Do you guys agree? Yeah. 2 plus 3 tenths plus 3? So could I say that this is 2 plus 3, get rid of the whole number, take care of the whole numbers first, and then add 3 tenths at the end? Yeah. Okay. I think that will help us. Let's take a look. Now we have our number line. Let's say this is 0. I'm going to number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And now, I'm going to start, we always start at zero, right, when we add, because if before I add anything, do I have any value? No. So what do I have to add first? What do I add first? Two. two. So when I add two, I'm at two. <laughs> then I add three more, right, plus three. What am I at when I add three more? Five. 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 And then I have to add three tenths. I'm just going to estimate. I think that's about three tenths of the way, right? So what would my answer be? Five and? Good. How is that easier than thinking, okay, I have to go two and three tenths and then three more? Do you see how if I move the three tenths to the end, it's easier to think about on our number line? Very good. This time we're going to use a number line to help us do one minus one fourth. Go ahead and draw your number line too. And I'm going to... This time, we just have to deal with 0 to 1. Now, when I'm subtracting, do I still move my, to the right? When I'm subtracting, I'm taking away, right? So I'm moving towards the? Yeah. And do I start at 0? No. 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 Okay, so I'm also going to divide this into fourths. So now, I can show when I'm doing subtraction, I actually start at the value of the first one because I have 1 to begin with. And I have to take away 1 fourth. Right, so I can show that when I move this way, 
I'm subtracting one fourth. So this is my answer. What is my answer then? Three fourths. So I can use my number line to find out that the answer is three fourths. This is a very simple example, and I intentionally started with a simple example. Okay. Let's quickly move on to the more complex example. This time we have two minus three fifths. So when you're setting up your number line, you don't always have to start at zero and go all the way to 100, right? You can think to yourself, if I have two and I take away three fifths, what two whole numbers will my answer be between? Okay, so really, I can focus my number line on the area between one and two. I don't even really need this part. And because I'm dealing with fifths, I know I want to split that distance between one and two into how many equal sized sections? Fifth. Okay, so this time I'm starting at two. I'm going to take away three fifths. Here's one fifth, two fifths, three fifths. I can write on top that I'm taking away three fifths. So here's my answer then. My answer is going to be two fifths. Very good. Still a pretty simple example because it's a whole number and I take away a fraction. Okay. But this one's a little more complex. This time I have three minus one and two-thirds. Do you guys remember when we did addition and we were able to say it was one plus two-thirds? Yeah. Let me ask you a very important question. Is this the same as three minus one plus two-thirds? Yes. Well, if you have parentheses. If I have parentheses, yes. Yeah. But what if I have no parentheses? No. no. Because what I'm doing is I'm actually doing three, take away one, and then am I adding two-thirds? Or am I taking away two more thirds? Or taking away two thirds, right? Think about it in a more simple example. Imagine that I had three dollars and I want to take away one dollar and fifty cents. Okay, is that going to be the same as three minus one dollar minus fifty cents? Or is it going to be three minus one dollar plus fifty cents? Which one's correct? Go ahead and talk about it at your table group. We can think of this, th by the way, oops, that's not an eraser. $1.50 is the same as one and one half dollars. Do you agree? Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, we can see that when you have a mixed number that you're subtracting, you have to take away both parts. You're subtracting one and you're subtracting one half. Do you see that? You're not adding back one half. That doesn't make any sense. Okay? But be careful, that's a very common fabulous fail. So now, we, can, we know now that we can think of 3 minus 1 and 2 thirds as 3 minus 1 and then 3 minus 2 thirds. Do you agree? Yes? I'm just going to tell you right now, that's one of the most common fabulous fails that people will make. Is when they're taking away a mixed number, they add the fraction part instead of subtracting it. Okay? Now, if we have 3 minus 1 minus 2 thirds, think to yourself, what two whole numbers will my answer be between? Don't blurt it out. If I have 3 minus 1, what does that equal? 2. Okay. I know 3 minus 1 is 2. If I'm going to take away 2 thirds, 2 minus 2 thirds, is that going to be more or less than 2? Less. less. Is it going to be more or less than 1? More. So my two whole numbers will be between 1 and 2. Okay. So I know that I can start with 1, 2, and I need to have 3 because that's where I'm starting my problem, right? Okay. So then also, I can see that I have fractions that are thirds, so I might as well just go ahead and split all those whole numbers into thirds. Right? So now, I can go ahead and use my number line. What number do I start at? Three. three. Good. I'm going to start at three. And what do I do first? I take away one. When I do three minus one, what do I get? Good. And now I have to take away two thirds. So. What's my final answer? Here's an opportunity again to make a fabulous fail. A lot of people will think, oh, well, I took away two thirds, so my answer is one third. What are they forgetting? The one. They're forgetting that the answer is one and one third. Okay? But do you see how it's very easy to make that mistake because we're just thinking about fractions in that time, right? So you've got to really think, I'm this this spot right here where my number line ended up is not one third, it's one and one-third. I wrote the, yes, I wrote it wrong, thank you.